going to um, to the Hill Day in a couple weeks is on this call. So we will be recording this, um, and then we will send this out um, to everyone who's coming to make sure that everyone gets a chance to see this. So I know we have more things to get through, so um, I'm going to try and be efficient with this. And I know that for, for some of you who have been doing um, hill visits for school-based health centers for many years, this is um, a lot of this is old information on how to do a hill visit. But I know for a number of you, this is new. Um, so I did want to provide some background to help everyone feel more confident and prepared um, for your visits in a couple weeks. So um, just to give an overview um, of what I'm going to talk about, um, I do want to just briefly go over the schedule of events for Wednesday. Um, just some, some info on, on your visits, where you're going to be, how to get there, some tips for your meeting, what are some, some key things to focus on. Um, and then just to kind of give you a sense of what is happening right now on the Hill, um, specifically in terms of health and education issues that you should be aware of when you go into your meetings, because um, those things will come into the conversation. Staff may ask you about them. And while you certainly are not expected to be an expert on them, we do want to arm you with some, some talking points and some background. So to that end, um, our 2015 public public policy priorities, which is um, a document every year that we develop um, with the Government Affairs Committee of the Board. We are in the process of finalizing that right now, um, so our board is reviewing it, and that will be final for your visit. So you will have a more in-depth document um, that kind of lays out our federal legislative and regulatory priorities so that you can refer to that in, in your meetings. Um, so just to review, as you all know by now, um, on the morning of February 25th, we are having a congressional briefing on the House side. Um, this is sponsored by Congressman Sarbanes from Maryland. Um, and this will feature um, some of our longtime school-based healthcare folks, like Sue Catchings and Herman Brister in Louisiana, and our very own Jesse from Connecticut, um, who will be speaking, as well as John. And we, as, as you are setting up your, your Hill visits, we have asked you to make sure that you invite staff to this briefing as well as the reception. Um, I think it really helps if they get a personal invitation from a, constituency, from a constituent. I think it really helps um, get people there. Um, so then in the middle of the day, so you have a, a pretty large chunk of time to do your Hill visits. Um, of course, you, know, you need to eat lunch and that sort of thing. But, um, essentially from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m., that is time that is blocked off for you to do your health visits. And by now, you should have all um, received information from me, instructions on how to set up your visits, how to contact the offices, how to make sure that you're meeting with the right person, how to email them, et cetera. Um, and if you are having difficulty with that, please, please let me know. Um, but I have included at the very end of the, that, that email that I sent a couple weeks ago, I included a list of suggested offices that I am suggesting that you meet with. And by no means is that you know, me telling you this is who you should meet with. Because for many of you, particularly in large states where you have a lot um, of members of Congress, you have to make some decisions on who to meet with. Um, so I just kind of, I based it on a number of things. Um, you know new members, meeting, meeting with, with members who sit on key com committees that are relevant to school-based health care, um, members that are in, in leadership positions, um, et cetera. So if you have any questions or comments about who I, who I have suggested for you, please let me know. It's just um, a list of, of recommendations to help you um, go from. But you guys, of course, are the experts in your own states. You have a better sense, I think, of who who is really key um, from your delegation than perhaps we do, being, being here in DC. Because um, for a number of your members, I, I, I don't know them well. I have not met with them. So you have a better sense of who those people are. So after Hill visits, we, we're having our reception in the, in the evening. Um, 
the Kaiser Permanente Center for Total Health is located right near Union Station, which is um, very close to the Senate side of buildings, which is where, where you'll be doing your Senate visits. So it's walking distance. Um, and I have not seen the space yet, but I hear that it's, um, it's really cool. It's a really great space. Um, so we're excited for that. And we also, we are um, giving an award, a, um, the exact name is escaping me, but it's a Policymaker Champion Award that we are giving to Senator Stabenow from Michigan for all of her contributions with the, um, the $200 million in um, construction for school-based health centers from the Affordable Care Act. And she has confirmed that she will be attending um, and will be accepting the award in person, which is exciting. Um, so we, we're going to send this map out, but we just created a map. And unfortunately, as I was doing these slides, I could see the entire map, but it didn't quite translate onto the page. But, but we will send you all this link so that you can pull this up on your phone on the day of so that when you're walking around to all your visits, you can clearly see where you're going, where all the key spots are. So the, the dots that you can see on the map are where the hotel is. Um, which is very close to the metro stop that you will be taking to the, the um, congressional briefing in the morning on the Hill. Um, and then you, you can't see it, but once we send you the link, you'll be able to see where all the Hill offices are, um, where the reception is in the evening. So they'll give you kind of a, a better sense of where you're going. Um, and then I just wanted to include a specific map of, of Capitol Hill um, so that you kind of get a sense of where you're going. So as you can see, the Capitol South Metro, um, so you will take that from in, in the morning. That's where you will get off um, to get to the congressional briefing, which is in the Rayburn House Office Building. So all of your, your house side visits will be in one of those three buildings, Rayburn, Longworth, or Cannon. And then as you can see, the Senate side buildings in blue, it's about a 15, 10 to 15 minute walk um, from the House side to the Senate side. And keep in mind, you, you, you don't really know where you're going. So I would budget in even, even more time in between your, your House and your Senate meetings. I, I, personally, I would say don't schedule a House or a Senate meeting um, Give yourself at least 30 minutes in between a house, a house visit and a, and a Senate side visit to get from place to place and to figure out where you're going. Um, so Suzanne, think of the geography. I think just, Suzanne, just to clarify, I think what you mean is the end of the meeting. Yes, right? I'm sorry. Yeah. The end of the meeting. Just, so I'm, just I'm, in case anyone hasn't done this, like between the beginnings of the meeting, right. it should be an hour. Yes. Thank you, Serena. Yeah. yeah. So, so think of geography. As you're, as you're setting up your meetings. I would budget, so I, I would say, I think the rule of thumb for, for your visits is about 30 minutes. So you're, you're probably not going to get more than 30 minutes of that staffer's time because Congress is in session. Um, typically, meetings just don't go longer than, than that. Um, I mean, you, you might get lucky, and, and maybe they don't have a lot going on that day, and you get longer. But I would, I would budget for about half an hour, but there's you know, it could be less. It could be 15 minutes. Um, so, yeah, so I, so I would give yourself an hour from the start of a House side meeting to the start of a Senate side meeting. Um, but really, just, just try and, and schedule all your House visits in one group and then go on the Senate side and do your Senate visits. Don't be running back and forth. You don't want to do that because it's, it's hard on your feet. Um, so that's my other tip is to wear comfortable shoes, the floors of these buildings are made of marble. Um, you want to be comfortable. Um, in several of the House and Senate buildings, they have cafeterias, which are open to, to everyone. And they're actually pretty decent. So I would recommend um, grabbing lunch in between your meetings at one of the cafeterias. There aren't a lot of other options really close by along the way. Um, yeah, so that's my um, part about that. Um, so as you continue to set up your meetings, please keep me posted as you schedule them, because I do want to keep a master schedule, um, in part to help assign staff. So if you're someone who, who wants a school-based health alliance staff person to accompany you on your visits, 
Um, we, we need to have the schedule of everyone's meetings in order to, to figure that out. So please keep us posted as you schedule your meetings um, so that we can keep track of that. And please invite the staff to the briefing and the reception. Um, okay, so in terms of, of background and preparation for your visit, um, it's really important to spend a few minutes and do a little bit of research on each member of Congress that you're meeting with. Keep in mind, this is a new congressional session. There are about 100 new members of Congress in the House and the Senate. Um, but there are probably a lot, of, a lot of members who are not necessarily new, but they're new to you because you've never met with them. So do, do some background. What committees are they sitting on? I've, I've intentionally um, made suggestions to you of members to meet with based in part based on some of the committees that they sit on. Do they sit on committees that have to do with health and education and appropriations? So look into that. Um, you know, who are these people? What did they do before they were in Congress? Are there certain issues that they're really passionate about that they really care about? I think it's important to keep in mind that for, for new members of Congress, they may, not, they may not know yet what their priority issues are, but they're, and, they, and maybe they're looking for an issue to champion. So this is your opportunity to teach them about school-based health centers so that they can pursue that. Um, and also really important, if they've never visited a school-based health center in their state or their district, invite them. That, that's a really important ask in these meetings. And that's like a basic thing. I mean, they're, they're home. They fly home nearly every weekend and for large chunks of time throughout the year. So the, this is the opportunity for them to, to do site visits and to see what a school-based health center looks like. Because we all know how powerful that is once they actually get to see one. Um, so remember to do that. In terms of leave behind folders, um, we will be assembling um, folders that have more um, nationally focused fact sheets and things like that. We'll also be including our public policy priorities document that I talked about that is soon to be finalized. But it's really important that you all bring some state and local information, because um, that's really what these offices want to hear about. They want to know about the school-based health center in their district or in their state. So whatever information or materials you have, please bring them. And if you can send them to us, can send them to me in advance, um, we can probably print them for you. Um, so please keep that in mind. So before I um, keep going, I know I'm kind of plowing through, but are there any questions so far on anything I've, I've talked about? OK. Um, so in terms of your actual meeting, so I know for some of you who, who are new to doing this sort of thing, um, maybe it's intimidating, but you have to remember that you are the expert on what you're going to talk about. And these staff, they, they want to learn about school-based health centers. And that's what you're there to talk about. And you're, you're the expert. Um, so feel confident in that. Also, really, really important, start with the basics. Start with school-based health center basics. You really have to assume minimal knowledge on the part of these staffers. They, they tend to handle a large portfolio of issues. Um, and I, I would venture to guess that, that a lot of them probably know very little, if anything, about school-based health centers. A number of them probably know a lot um, and, and, are, and are very knowledgeable. But I would really start the conversation with assessing you know, what do they know about school-based health centers, and then kind of give a background on what they are, what they're not, which is also very important, um, how, how they're funded, how they're sponsored, things like that. And I, you know, I think it's a common um, misperception, I think, on the Hill is, is that school-based health centers are the same thing as the school nurse. You know, that, that's something that you have to explain, how that's not the same thing. Um, so, so, so make sure that you're starting off your meeting kind of laying the foundation of what a school-based health center is. Um, and as I said before, budget for about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and I want to thank Serena for her exercise at the beginning about talking about you know, why are school-based health centers worth all this trouble? Because um, I think this is really good um, visit prep. Um, I think it's important to be specific about you know, why, why, why is this important? Why does it matter? Um, tell your story. I think People love to hear stories, um, and I think that people will remember 
specifics more than generalizations. So if there's, you know, a specific story that you have about, you know, a, a student who's, who's life was really changed by a school-based health center or, um, you know, another example. Be as specific as possible because people really hang on to those details. Um, and then when they go and tell their boss about the meeting, it, it really resonates. Um, so try and be as specific as possible. And then also, when, you're, when your meeting is over, I really hope that you all can look at these meetings as just the start of a relationship. So for some of you who already have a relationship with, um, the staff of your members of Congress, that, that's great. And hopefully when, when great things happen in your state and with your health centers, you're, you're, you're sending those staff those news clips and the updates of what's going on. But if you don't already have a relationship with those staff, I think this is a great opportunity to start doing that and to start to maintain more regular contact with them. Um, so part of that, obviously, is once your, your meeting is over, please, you know, send a thank you note within 24 or 48 hours and follow up. So if they're asking about something that you don't have the answer to right away, um, take a note of that and get back to us and, and maybe we can help, help you figure out that answer. But it's important to maintain follow up because um, we, we can't just talk about school-based health centers um, once in a while. We have to do it more regularly. And, um, you know, I don't get to meet with all these members of Congress all the time, so it's important that they hear from you um, on a more regular basis. Um, so in terms of some, some key talking points, um, I kind of touched on this earlier. So think about things like what is you, uniquely important about the school-based health centers in your state or district. Try and paint a picture of what would happen if the school-based health center wasn't in, in that community, in that state or, or district? Um, and how can Congress help? Um, and this is, this is a harder question to answer. Um, and I think, you know, we're, we're going to get to some more of the specific public policy priorities so that you can actually kind of point directly to certain um, pieces of legislation and recommendations. But I think there are, are Short of that, I think that there are numerous ways that your member of Congress um, can help you. I think the first of which is asking for a site visit. So if they've never seen a school-based health center, invite them to, to come and do a site visit. Um, this is a, a big part of what they do when they're back in their districts um, on, the, on the weekends and during work periods. Um, and also, may, Maybe there's a local policy issue that you're struggling with in your state, and maybe having your member of Congress weigh in and write a letter or make a phone call, maybe that would, would be really helpful. So think about that, because they do this sort of thing all the time. Um, <clears throat> so I also, we also want to make a plug for, for social media. Um, so if you um, take any photos during the day, if your Hill visits or at the briefing or the reception, um, send your photos to Anna um, so that we can, can post them. And also post to your Facebook and Twitter if your state affiliate um, has a Twitter account. Um, and I think I made a mistake with the tag SBHA. Yeah, there's no, so, so for the Twitter account, there's no .org. It's just um, at SBH for all. Um, so, so yeah, so that's important. We want to let everyone know that, that we're doing this, and you want to let your um, state people know that you're on the Hill. So before I go on to specific um, pieces of legislation, are there any questions? All right. So I, I'm going to kind of um, cut this down a little bit because I know um, I know we have some uh, some other things to get to, but I, d I do want to kind of give a some background on what what is happening right now in Congress in terms of health and education. So as you all know, um, CHIP, the Children's Health Insurance Program, um, which is an important payer for the school-based healthcare population, um, is set to expire. Um, at the end of September unless it's reauthorized. So it, it's actually sunsetting, which means that so there are a, a lot of programs that expire but continue to be funded. Um, 
because legally they're they're allowed to be. But if a if a program has a sunset clause in it, like CHIP does, um, it actually ends. So unless it's reauthorized by September 2015, the funding will, will end, which is very scary because it means that they really do need to get it done and reauthorize it this year. Um, we, we do know that if it's not reauthorized, many children will lose health coverage because they will not be able to afford insurance through the exchanges. Um, I heard this morning at a meeting that it's estimated that about one million children will like immediately lose coverage um, if this is not reauthorized. Um, there are democratic versions of, of a reauthorization bill in both the House and the Senate, but the Republicans have not, um, they've, they've not um, put forth a proposal yet for reauthorization. So, so we're not really sure you know, where it's moving right now. But this is an important program um, for our population that we want to um, definitely let members know um, that we are in support of. Another big thing um, that is happening is the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, um, ESDA, which is uh, also known as No Child Left Behind. Um, so in contrast to CHIP, where um, the program sunsets in September and funding will actually end, um, ESDA has not been reauthorized since 2007, yet it continues to be funded. So this is something that, um, that in the Senate, um, Senator um, Lamar Alexander, who is chair of the, the health committee in the Senate, which has jurisdiction over health and education, he's put forth a proposal, um, a reauthorization bill. Um, you know, I, I think that the Republicans, that they, they really see this time as an opportunity because they're in power um, to make some significant changes to the legislation. Um, so I, I think that the reason that they're moving on this is that they really see that this is an opportunity to, to sort of change the, the bill and bring a lot of control back in, into the states. Um, but this isn't something that has to necessarily move through. Because as I said before, if it's not reauthorized, the funding will still continue. Um, but this is something that is being talked about on the Hill, particularly in the Senate, where there have been a number of hearings so far on the bill. And there's been a lot of interest from a number of members on mental health in schools. So I really kind of want to let you, you all know that as you go into your meetings. But this is something that a lot of members are really interested in. Um, we've had an, um, an office reach out to us um, specifically wanting to know how school-based health centers, um, how they address mental health in schools. And so I think that there are a number of opportunities um, for us in this reauthorization process. And we do have some more specific policy recommendations as it relates to ESDA and how health can be um, incorporated and specifically how school-based health centers can be incorporated. I am going to skip through that um, right now just for time, um, but I will, I'll send that information out and that, those specific recommendations will be included in our um, priorities document as well. And another thing I want you all to be aware of, which I'm sure you probably are, is the primary care cliff. Um, so this relates to community health centers, so, um, which of course are an important um, sponsor for, for school-based health centers. Um, so in short, community health centers are funded through a combination of di discretionary funding, which is money that is annually appropriated, and as well as, as mandatory, fund mandatory funding streams. Um, so what happened was that when the Affordable Care Act was passed, it created this mandatory health centers fund, um, which constitutes about 70% of all funding for the, the health centers. Um, and that, that mandatory portion is scheduled to end um, at the end of this fiscal year. So that's why it's being called the primary care fiscal cliff. Um, so this is, um, this is both frightening, but also um, you know, this is something that the National Association of Community Health Centers is really leading the, um, the advocacy effort on. Um, they are very powerful and well-staffed, and I'm sure that, that every single member of Congress is very aware of this issue. Um, but it is something that's 
Im important for you to mention in your meetings, P particularly if you're from a state where um, community health centers are, are a main sponsor of school-based health centers. Um, so I know that this is something that, that there is a large level of awareness of on the Hill, but they have not quite figured out what the fix is going to, to be. So it's a problem that has not yet been solved, um, but a lot of people um, are working on it. So it's definitely something that you want to be aware of in your meetings and you may be asked about. So are there any questions on anything I've talked about so far? So you're going to give us a handout with all of this on it? Yes. So, and I, I'm going to kind of just speed through this a little bit um, for, for time. But um, all the things that I've just talked about um, and some of the things that you see listed here about our um, priorities for, 20, for 2015, our federal po um, policy priorities document, um, which, as I said earlier, our board is reviewing it right now. Um, it's about to be finalized, and it will be final um, prior to the, this meeting. So you will have a handout that explains in much more detail what our specific priorities are and specifically what our recommendations are. Um, okay. So don't fear. Um, I just don't want to use up all the time on this call to... Um, yeah, I'm getting a little bit worried about time, too. So. Okay, so I will skip through that. Um, and we, you know, we, if you guys have specific questions on this, we can talk at, a, at another time. But um, when I, um, I have notes on, on these slides that go into more detail about all of these things. So I'll be sure to, to send this out. Um, so just to sort of wrap up, um, I hope that you all are setting up your visits. Please keep me posted. If you're having any issues, please let me know. I'm happy to help. Um, yeah, and then that's pretty much it. So before I sign off, are there, are there any questions? Is this helpful to people, or is this an enormous waste of time? OK. <laughs> well, I mean, I know Jesse and I have done a lot of visits. I don't know about, and I don't know about other people on the call, so. I guess it depends on if people have done this a lot. This is uh, uh, Barb from Maryland, and I thought the review was very helpful. And okay, yeah, help. and I, yeah, I know that there's a range of experience amongst this, this group, and I'm very aware of that. Um, I just wanted to find a time to, to talk to all of you as a group and just give some, some background. So bear with me for yeah. the experts out there. I, you know, this is Jesse, though, and, and like Serena, even though I've been doing it, it, it it's it's important to keep hearing the issues so that, um, you know, because it's not, not all of them, you know, like ESEA and, the, you know, the fiscal cliff, and those are not all things yeah, that yeah. are completely issue, a part yeah. of my day-to-day, -day, so right. it's good to keep hearing it, yeah, for me. Drill it home. Yeah, and, and just one final, I mean, this is not, I don't want you all to feel like you have to talk about all of these different things. I just want to provide some context about what what is being talked about right now um, on the Hill, because you may be asked about it. I think that naturally the staffers, they want to hear about your program and what's happening in your state, but they also naturally are they want to tie it to what is happening federally. So I just want you to kind of get a sense of the main things that are happening so that if you're asked about it, you can kind of point to some recommendations. So I hope that that was helpful. And we'll have Great. some more time. Um, the day before, on Tuesday, when, you, when you're all here in DC, we will have some more time um, at the state leaders meeting to, to do some help prep. Great. Thanks, Suzanne.